We rolling. All right. All right, guys, here we go. This is my go-to backwater tarpon fly. I use this a lot for canal fishing, for uh, fishing spillways, anything that tarpon are feeding on little minnows. I tie this little black fly. It's a little minnow fly. It's my go-to fly, best fly for tarpon in freshwater, brackish water situations. So I start off with a size two B10 stinger. Right there. Then I'm gonna go with some black fuzz. What is this? <laughs> it's not what you think it is, no. I'm gonna use black fin raccoon. Uh, shout out to Saltwater Fly Tires out of St. Augustine. They sent me a lot of material um, because they heard that it's my favorite material and I can never find it anywhere. So they sent it out to me with uh, Travis Luther, who's another fishing artist from uh, St. Augustine area. So he brought this down to me last time we went fishing and I use it a lot. All right guys, so first we're gonna start off with the black 210 denier. I like 210 because it doesn't break and you can build up pretty quickly with less wraps. Kind of get a nice little base going. Cut off the tag end. I like to go back and wrap right over it again. Help secure it down. So it's actually a very, very simple fly. Very effective fly. It's pretty much all I've tied for the last year and a half. It's almost all I use because all I've been doing is fishing for tarpon for these uh, you know, juvenile five to 15, 20 pound tarpon. Occasionally we got a 30 pounder but they're a lot of fun on the five weight and this fly is deadly. So you want that much fin or coon. It's not a lot, you just want enough to dart through the water, give it some nice action. I like fin or coon. It's hard to find, but it has some really nice action in the water. You start off with some four, four or five loose turns that kind of cinch it down to help secure it, stops it from spinning on the hook. Then you just want to get a nice wrap going. Very simple fly. This fly only takes three materials. It doesn't have to be that nice because I'm gonna come back over it with some brush in a minute anyway. So then black crystal flash, black on black. So I'm gonna get three strands of black flash if I can. Three strands. And lay it on one side along the back side of the hook shank that faces you. Get a few turns. Kind of secures it onto the other side and then you just get a few wraps. And now you have black flash on each side. Helps give the fly a little bit of depth in the water. Helps the fish key in on it. And then last final step, very easy, or last material going on there. Tarantula. EP Tarantula one inch, this is black and red. I like black and red, black and purple, black and black. Just black. These fish are, the, the darker the fly, the easier, the sharper the silhouette is that they could key in on when they're in hunting mode. So for the Tarantula, start off on the, on the side. Get a few wraps. To secure it on there, work your way forward. So this is going to mimic a bait fish again, so you want to wrap, brush back as you go forward, it helps build the body. But as you turn, keep brushing the fibers back. Just want to do enough turns to build a nice head on it. It's like the body and the head in one. I cannot reiterate how easy this fly is to tie and how effective it is. So I'm gonna keep going. Seems excessive, but gives you enough material to come back and trim it to the shape of a little minnow bait fish. Get a few turns on there to secure it. A nice tug to cinch it down, cut that off. Kind of want to pull it back. This whole thing is slid. 
kind of want to pull it back so you can do your the head wrap. It doesn't have to be all that fancy. Where I fish is usually black water canals, you know, very dark water. That's why I go with the dark fly. A lot of people think that the darker the water, the brighter the fly, which is actually, I've noticed it's actually opposite. The darker the water, the darker the fly because it creates a stronger silhouette for them to see. End it off with a whip finish. Get your good scissors. Cut off the thing. Now here comes the vital part. You kind of want to pick it up and pick it down. All right, we're trying to create a bait fish so it's flat on the sides and then tall on the top and the bottom. I sometimes do stick on eyes. Not really necessary, I've noticed they kind of fall off after you hook two or three fish on it and they still keep eating it even without it. So the more I can simplify a pattern and it still works better for me because it gives me more time to catch fish instead of time at the vise. So you want to cut the sides flat, as you can see right here, kind of picking away, create the flat flatness to the side other side as well. The less material, the more it'll dart in the water. You see it's now flat on both sides. So now I want to round off the top and bottom. It's a little bit square. So you want to cut it, taper it. Smaller in the front and let it get bigger towards the back. Top and bottom taper. Sometimes it's easier to take this off the vise for the for this part. Want something like trimmed, more or less. So you see, I kind of trimmed it down, got this little tapering effect. It kind of tapers, it flows into the tail. Once it gets in the water, this is gonna help push. It builds a nice little head, mimics a middle, looks great in the water. Fish love it. You kind of wanna cut the flash a little bit, make sure it's about the length of the tail. All black and red, works great. Finish it off with a whip finish again. I must have just cut it like too close. So you guys have it. There is my, uh, the absolute crushing tarpon fly. Backwater works in tarpon snook. I'm gonna catch peacock bass on it, but i tie this specifically for tarpon. And the freshwater canals, you know, brackish, freshwater, even way up in the glades works really well. Make sure you subscribe and join me along this journey.